Welcome back to my channel. In today's episode, we're going to have a quick look at a very famous software among the Volvo and Polestar enthusiasts, software called Orbit. Over the years, several coding tools have been developed for different generations of Volvos. Orbit focuses specifically on the newer SPA CMA platforms, offering owners a way to unlock features and perform retrofits, all at a very affordable price. Whether you have an older version, census-based Volvo, or from the newer Android-based models, the Orbit is designed to work with both. One difference with the Sensus model is that you tend to have more options for features to unlock or customize, which for me personally is the reason I prefer this system more. With Android integration, Volvo has simplified things a lot. While that brings up some benefits, I do miss features like the customizable themes, driving mode selector and some extra personalization options that were removed in the later models. In this video, our main focus is to activate adaptive cruise control, pilot assist and Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. The best part, no hardware installation is needed, whether your car has a single or dual USB hub, these features can be enabled with just software. Before starting with the mods, we have installed the latest system updates for the car. It's preferable to do these updates before doing any mods, as if you take your car to dealership or connect it to Vida software, you're risking of getting your car blacklisted or banned if a non-factory modification is detected. To avoid this, make sure you restore your car back to OEM before connecting it to Vida. I will leave a link in the video description for the software website where you can read more about how to get the software, what is the pricing and more information and guidance on how to use it. I will also link my own website and social media channels in case you need support or prefer someone to do the upgrades for you. Starting off with the tools you're going to need to get the Orbit up and running, well, it's more straightforward than you might expect. All you need is a Windows 10 or 11 laptop and a VOE cable or any NET cable branded for Volvo or BMW, they're all the same. Just a quick look at the car menus, just to show that we don't have any of these features activated just yet. On the cluster, by default, we get a speed limit and normal cruise control. So moving on to the actual process, we have a laptop, we connect the cable to the OBD port of the car and we open Orbit. The installation of the program is quite straightforward. As soon as you purchase a subscription, you get an account set up and to log in, you just need to use your email address. After login, you're going to land on the main startup page, which we're having here in front of us. The starting point for us would be to connect the program. After you press the connect button, if you haven't connected your car before, what will happen is you need, you'll be prompted to create a vehicle profile. You need to do this before you're able to proceed any further. The entire process takes a couple of minutes, so you have to wait until a vehicle readout is performed. For us, as we have connected the car previously, the connection is made straight away. The next thing to bring your attention to is the send pin button. When you connect your car for the first time, this button will light up, trying to get your attention that you haven't entered the central electronic module pin. Without this pin, you won't be able to change the configuration of the car, so that should be the first thing to sort out. If you have paid for a CEM decoding service, after you receive your pin, you need to enter it there. Again, for us, we've, as we've done this a long time ago, there's no need to do anything right now. Having a quick look at the main screen, what we have is some shortcuts for diagnostic functions, clearing fault codes, resetting modules, and some relevant car information. If you haven't purchased a subscription, you should still be able to access this information as well as more service functions, which we can find on the next page. Quite handy, here you have a range of service functions, probably more things than you're ever gonna need to use as an owner. The next menu is a bit more specialized. You have various options and functions to run on individual modules. You can reconfigure some of them as well as read and write their flash memory. Here's the place to say, don't mess, don't mess around unless you know what you're doing. Jumping to the last menu page called Expert Toolbox, what's worth highlighting on this page are the security tools. These tools you're going to need to decode your CEM pin if you have a video lock which contains it or if you have captured the pin uh, with some, some other methods. 
There's some other functions available, but to be fair, I'm not even fully sure myself what some of those might be used for. So moving on to the essential part, here we have the configuration wizard. The purpose of this is to give us a quick and convenient access to some of the most common modification options, which saves you having to manually scroll through the list of options in the configuration in the configurator menu. As in our case, we are interested in activating the adaptive cruise control and pilot assist, and as we are on the driving aid page, we select the following two options. Just scrolling quickly through some of the other available shortcuts, you have various lighting setting options, activate adaptive beams, bedding lights and other headlights operation options. In the equipment menu we have some other options like upgrading the audio system, but surely all of those would require additional hardware to be installed in the car. So we have selected the adaptive cruise control from the menu, we still need to enable the CarPlay and Android Auto settings manually. To do this we go to the configurator tab. As we could see the adaptive cruise settings are highlighted as we have already selected them from the configuration wizard. So we now want to type in the search bar Android. You may have to tick the option show everything. So it shows up under register 224 device mirroring. And we want to select option 4 with CarPlay and Android Auto. I will put a list on the screen of some of the most common modifications on SPA Volvos. If there is an interest I can make another video showing some of the other possible retrofits. After the desired options are selected you need to write the changes to the car from the top function bar. Then you also have options to save current configuration settings which you can load later if you need. You also have restore to OEM button which returns the configuration back to original. You need to do this before you take your car to dealership or if you have the car connected to Vida software. So you proceed with the right of the selected options. The pop-up screen will give us a summary of the actual configuration register settings. We click OK and we leave the software to do its magic. You hear the car making some switching noises as it enters and exits programming mode. It's nice that we have the dialog box and we can sort of see the current programming stage. The process may take a couple of minutes, including the post-programming and deleting of any fault codes. So programming is not completed, you can read and delete any remaining fault codes. We disconnect the car, let's see what the changes are. So if we scroll through the menu pages, we see that we now have the Android Auto and CarPlay icons. And further right, we have some additional features which are a result of the adaptive cruise control activation. And we start the car. We can see that we have the speed limiter, adaptive cruise and pilot assist options. Everything looks as expected, so we take the car for a spin to see how the functions work. After driving the car for a couple of days, function seems to work amazing as long as there's good road markings. Especially for long journeys, those functions are nice things to have. The Android Auto CarPlay are also nice, with the exception that the wired Android connection is not always very stable, especially if you have a single USB hub instead of dual. The quality of the cable is something I found that matters a lot. So that will be everything for today's video. If you like this video, like and subscribe and maybe leave a comment with ideas of the next retrofit video. Thank you for watching, see you next time.